Round six of the 2014 British Chess Championship saw international master Jonathan Hawkins keep his 100% score, moving to the tremendous result of six out of six with a victory over Simon Williams. Hello, I'm Andrew Martin and welcome to my game of the day for round six, which is the very sharp encounter between Marcus Harvey playing white and Grandmaster Chris Ward playing black. Ward, as we know, we've seen him before on this channel. He plays a lot of interesting chess with either colour. Former British champion in 1996, a very strong grandmaster. Marcus Harvey with white, you might not know him. He is one of the current crop of extremely promising young English players. A player with his own style. He's got extremely good endgame technique. But he tends to play in an original vein in the opening. And here he comes out with B3. Well, when Larson was playing this move back in the 60s and 70s, he played it because he thought he was stronger than the opponent. He wanted to avoid theory, and he just thought, OK, I'm going to outplay you. We'll just get a messy position, all the pieces on the board, and uh, I'm better than you. And really, that's how B3 is viewed even today. We've seen Carlson employ it just as a means of getting away from the opponent's preparation in this computer age. That's how B3 can be used successfully. The only thing is, what happens if black straightforwardly occupies the centre with e5 and knight c6? I've often felt this is the acid test of b3. Everything else, not quite so critical. And now Harvey plays e3. Well, when I see games like the one we're about to view, I really do feel that c4 is a better move. That was the move employed by Larson and Fisher on occasion. And I think it's... Probably better for white to dissuade black from playing d5 at this juncture. The reason being that if we go back to the game, I mean, I know e3 has been played many, many times. It's probably the most popular move here. I just feel the system with d5, bishop b5 and now bishop d6, leads to a good position for black. And uh, whatever white plays here, black just gets a very reasonable game. So it really is up to white to show something in this position. And Harvey continues with the sharpest move, f4 putting the question to the black pawn on e5. Now black has two good responses here. And one response which I think is pretty uh, pretty decent is to give a check on h4. Provoking a slight weakness in the white king side and only now dropping back to e7. Yes, I know white could probably get equality in this line, but um, nevertheless, I think that move g3 is quite ugly. Ward chooses another way. He plays the immediate f6 which allows white to play a kind of echo move of the last variation, queen h5 check. And when black plays g6, white drops back with queen h4. Satisfied that he has provoked weaknesses in black's king side. And in particular, along the long diagonal. Ward now plays a surprising move now. And um, I think quite a good move too. The unexpected knight g7. And of course, if this move is good, then White's whole opening system is um, nothing special. Now, the point of this move is that, uh, and what Black has other moves, I have to say here, Black has also got e takes f4, he's also got queen e7. Knight g7 tries to take immediate advantage of the position of White's queen. And the point is that when White takes on f6, because Black's last move looks like a mistake, Black's idea is rook f8. And the initiative that Black gets picks up steam from this point onwards. We know that black has vacated the long diagonal with his rook, so the white bishop on b2 is less dangerous, and white's got to find a good square for his queen. Well, Harvey retreats with queen h4. Now, he could have continued with the original play with queen c7, uh, queen g7, excuse me. This, uh, this is more psychological than anything. You know, White puts his queen into the enemy guts and he says, well, how are you going to get rid of me? If allowed, I'm going to take on h7. Well, it turns out, I think that Black can keep the initiative on the boil here by taking on f4. We see something like this in the game. Rook takes f4, allowing White to take on h7. And now the Black pieces stream out after bishop g4 and queen d7. And this is the point of the line, really. Black's willing to sack a pawn, maybe even two pawns, just to get his pieces flowing. White's queen has gone on an adventure there, and as a result, White's lost some time. So this could lead to a serious initiative for black. And of course, 
that's what Ward is after. So Harvey moves his queen yet again for the fourth time in a row and black opens up the game. He takes f4. Well, I think in future, white players are going to have to investigate other moves here. And, um, I mean, it could be that moves like knight c3 or knight f3 are the types of moves white should be looking at. Just concentrating on addressing the arrears in development and um, recognising that the black position is, is pretty dangerous. So in the game, OK, Harvey recaptured and... Perhaps slightly surprisingly, and I wonder whether Harvey was expecting this move, Ward took with his bishop. Of course, rook takes f4 was a serious move here. And uh, if queen takes h7, now black has two moves. He can go rook f7 here, but also bishop g4 is dangerous. With similar play to the last example, just getting the pieces out. Queen d7, castles on the queen side. Black has an attack. But going back, Ward captures with his bishop. White plays knight e2. And now queen to d6. Setting a little trap in that if white castles here, black has bishop takes h2 check. Winning straight away. So instead of castling, Harvey plays rook f1. Again, setting his soul to the devil here in the sense that, well, he's got a castle queenside now to get his king to safety. But Ward continues with another good move here, bishop e5, and this puts the question to White's position. What should he do here? Harvey decided to take on c6, promoting a series of exchanges which actually don't work out too well for him. I mean, he could perhaps have retained that bishop, maybe took on e5, queen takes e5, and then something like knight bc3. Clearly, white can also take on f8 and then play knight to c3. But in that case, the knight on c6 is freed up. White's got more problems here than perhaps first appears. So bishop takes d6 check. White recaptured, black recaptured with the pawn. And one option now that that gives black is to move his bishop out to a6, which as we'll see in the game, proves very dangerous. Harvey takes on f8, king takes f8, he takes on e5, queen takes e5, and now it's possible that he may have been intending knight bc3 in this position. And I think this probably works out slightly better for him than the game does. Now, if black plays bishop a3 here, we go d3, that's no big deal for white. So probably better for, for uh, black here is to play knight f5. But after that, white can play queen f4. And I think this would certainly have given him better chances the, than the game, as after the exchange, knight takes, king e7, white can castle. As we'll see, white never gets his king to safety in the game. Perhaps this was the best way. I mean, I think black is okay here. Um, he's got sufficient activity to compensate for his, uh, his weak pawn structure. But uh, white is okay too, and I'm sure Harvey would have preferred that to what happens in the game. As after d4, very committal, black buries the queen in his guts after queen e3. And after queen f2 check, Ward is on the ball, he plays knight f5. And I don't know whether this uh, was a surprising continuation for Harvey, but um, now he commits a mistake. Well, what white should play, clearly, is g4 before black gets his bishop out and is able to develop his rook. The fact that he doesn't play this move immediately is a serious omission on Harvey's part. And probably after that, it looks pretty equal. I mean, I think both sides are okay. What well, Black's got to take the queens off. Knight d6, maybe this was what Harvey didn't like, the fact that the black knight comes into e4. But white can cope with this. And after bishop a6, just bring the knight out, rook e8, it seems to me that both sides are okay. Black's active. Uh, on the other hand, he's got the worst pawn structure. White's king is safe. He can bring his rook in straight away. It should be okay for both sides. Instead, and going back to the game, Harvey makes the understandable mistake of, of thinking that he has to develop his pieces here. And of course, after bishop uh, knight d2, that runs straight into bishop a6. 
and now the black initiative picks up steam well i think the situation has suddenly become very critical for white and this prompts a further mistake it looks like harvey does not like being under direct attack he plays g4 what should he do well if he plays c4 then i think we go rook e8 straightforward move forcing the exchange of queens now there's a fork black's threatening knight c2 check he's threatening knight takes g2 rook c1 knight takes g2 check king f2 knight h4 only black can be better although white will have some chances once he's moved his knight on e2 Going back, of course, uh, queen takes e3, knight takes e3, allows the same fork as before. The black knight is, is dominant. But um, the move g4 only increases the problems for white. And from now on, black is really on top. He plays rook e8, noting that if, black, uh, if white takes the black knight, queen takes f2, check is an immediate win. King takes f2, and then... Rook takes e2 check, winning a piece. So Harvey's forced to block with c4. And Ward now plays another very good move here. Queen takes d4, taking advantage of the pin on the knight, hitting the rook on a1. Rook c1, and now it's misery all the way as black takes on g4. So it's all gone very wrong. That's the issue with these flank openings, you know. When you don't get anything out of the, the, uh, the opening, you, you can sometimes... Walk a thin line, slight er slight error by you, you get into a position like this, king stuck in the middle. There's no coming back here. Knight f3 was answered by king g8, just getting away from all the tactics, enabling the knight to move. Although actually, um, black can probably take on c4. That's another good move here, take on c4 twice. And if queen c5 check, then I think we just go rook e7. As far as I can see, this wins cleanly for black but what war does is good as well he plays his king out of the way white moves his own king and then now black takes on c4 it's very clear cut the black piece is streaming on top of everything else black's three pawns up harvey brings his knight to d4 queen f4 check king c2 and now another clean move by black c5 after which white resigned there really are no moves once the knight moves Black's got a choice between playing the rook check, which must win, or simply capturing on f5, which also wins very easily. So that was it, a nice game by Chris Ward, and um, to an extent it shows us the way against b3, just returning to the opening. Why get involved in too many uh, um, messy complications when you can play the straightforward way, just taking the centre and get a good position? That's it. Okay, we move to round seven today and more exciting chess.